start with you telling us a little bit about how you've been using technology to innovate in learning at Coventry? We've used technology in, in, in lots of ways, uh, but the first way I'm going to talk about is um, the way in which we're supporting on-campus students mm -hmm. um, by understanding the data about them, about their background, about their learning habits, um, and moving now on to support their mental health and their levels of anxiety, which seem to be increasing. Mm. So by using the data to really personalize and to nudge the students back into engagement and also to help students uh, um, achieve their best results. So a combination of data and technology and um, traditional methods of calling and speaking and text and WhatsApp and whatever they want mm -hmm. to use. So a CRM, um, data, lots of data used reasonably smartly. Yeah. Um, and the next stage is then to bring social media and um, their, their other digital footprints not associated to the university but how we use that to understand their sentiment and to see how they're feeling so that even before they become nervous about study, we can nudge them back into, into action. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you've encountered trying to implement all of that? Um, data security, uh, data protection, um, resistance by people as to how they, um, uh, not by the students, but, but by uh, faculty and by um, uh, professional staff on the change process. So it's, it's, it's about cultural change more than, more than about the, the technology, although the technology uh, could be much smarter mm -hmm. than the use of, uh, of AI. I know it's uh, simple to say, but the way in which we really automate those processes to, to know before it really happens that something's about to happen and then to make sure it doesn't need to happen so that, so that someone can be supported in learning so mm -hmm. that they can achieve the best results. We have a really big problem in the UK with um, equity of attainment. If you're um, a student of colour, if you're from a lower socioeconomic background, your chances of attaining the same outcome, even though you may have entered with the same qualifications, are significantly diminished. We have to change that. Yeah. And data and um, machine learning have a, a real role to play there. Change is really hard yep. and requires yep. leadership. Can you say a little bit about how your leadership and leadership across the, your university has helped lead to the change? It's about um, integrating those, those opportunities and taking that message back and then getting the message out more broadly so that um, uh, the faculty and the staff can, can really start to see that the world is changing. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are lots of people saying this, not just a few students who, who may be being awkward or a few um, colleagues who are maybe being awkward. It's actually the world that's changing around them and, and, and yeah. seeing that. Uh, second is to, is, is to set out a clear view uh, as to what's important. Um, for me, what's important is about teaching and learning. It's about making sure that the, the quality of the teaching that we do is absolutely top class, um, that the support systems that we prepare for the students are absolutely the best that they can be, and then to give the students the opportunity to flourish. So leadership is about setting the, the tone, the vision, uh, and then being relentless in, um, in pushing that. And also focusing on detail sometimes as well. It's yeah. not just about big picture, it's also about really uh, small things. And for me, it's about um, not asking someone to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. That's yeah. really not fair. Yeah, well I know you're relentless in everything you do, so I just appreciate your spending time with us today. Thank you. Thank you.